Glory to Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And so, brothers and sisters, in this partial testimony, I will be addressing exclusively my encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ in the Spirit with the Lord Yehoshua HaMashiach. So here we go. I was lying in my bed, and it was night, and the room was pitch black. And I'm not sure if I was still asleep or if I had awakened for a moment. I was in a state that seemed to be one of semi-consciousness. And I saw a white light that appeared as a white dot, and it was far away from me. A white dot the size of a pixel on a TV screen. And that white dot was coming to me at great speed. It was coming to me at what one would call the speed of light in this world. And as it was getting closer to me, it kept getting bigger and bigger. And I thought to myself for a moment, this dot of light, which has become a white ball of light by now, it's going to collide with me. And so indeed that light hit me. It collided with me. And when it did, there was an abrupt change of scenery. I was no longer in my bedroom. I was in a place where there was only white light. A white light that was pure and ever-present. And I came to understand that I was engulfed in it. I had been taken over by that white ball of light, and now I was in it. When this occurred suddenly, instinctively I kind of tried to regain my balance, because as far as my understanding was concerned, I had just been involved in some type of a collision. But when I tried to set my feet, trying to stabilize myself, if you will, I realized that there was no floor or ground per se to do that. And so I kind of stumbled, if I can call it this way, trying to set my feet on nothing. And as I did that, I kind of swung my right hand and right forearm in front of my eyes, trying to recapture my balance. But as I did that, I did notice that I didn't see my right hand nor my right forearm. And so I couldn't see my limbs. I couldn't see myself. And I realized at that moment, combining the fact that there was no place for me to set my feet and that I couldn't see my members, it hit me that I was now floating in some type of environment that was no longer earthly. And it dawned on me, I got the understanding that I was in the spirit. And so now I find myself in the spirit. And I realized that I'm floating in some type of thin air, being engulfed in this great white light. Now, as far as my earthly senses are concerned, I can see this environment, this great white light that I'm engulfed in, but there's no sound, there's no scent, no smell, and there's nothing to grab onto. And further, in light of what happens next, I come to understand that there is no requirement to speak words where I find myself, because I receive a message telepathically, and I receive the understanding that I can communicate by sending thoughts telepathically, and that I don't have to voice words here. And so the first thing that I receive in terms of information, I receive information that there is a being behind me at my right standing. I have this awareness, and I never looked behind me to know this, I just knew. And then, I got a feeling that this being was a special being, and I was kind of given a hint that it was the Lord. And as soon as I received that, I thought to myself, wow, this is amazing, this is incredible. Is it really the Lord with me here? Am I really in the presence of the Lord? And I was thinking this because, to put you in context, 
prior to this experience, I had been seeking the Lord with everything I had, not by my own strength, but because the Lord was drawing me in at that point in my life. So the Bible says no one can come to the Father unless he draw him to him. And so it was the Father drawing me in and working through me made it so I would be seeking him because he was in fact drawing me. And so because of this context, when the Lord gave me a hint that it was him behind me at my right, I was very excited and I thought, what an amazing outcome that having embarked on this quest to find the Lord, I now find myself in the Spirit, in His presence. And I started to form a thought in my mind that I was going to turn around and look at Him. But midway through my thought, the Lord already had sent me an answer and a reply to my inquiry. And He said, you cannot turn around and look at me. I am not someone you can just turn around and lay eyes on. And so I found myself paralyzed as I tried to initiate turning my head to my right to look behind me, because I knew that that's where he was. And so he did not allow for me to turn around. However, because he understood I wanted to confirm the information that I had received that I was in the presence of the Lord, he confirmed it for me, and he sends me a message. He says, I am Jesus, the Almighty God. Wow! I am Jesus, the Almighty God. Oh, brothers and sisters, I'm going to read two Bible verses for you at this point. Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Revelation chapter 1 still, verse 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. O oh, Jésus de Nazareth. And so, brothers and sisters, I could not turn around to look at him. He made me understand, and we're communicating telepathically. He made me understand, you can't turn around to look at me. Now, remember Exodus chapter 33, verse 20. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And 1 John chapter 3, verse 2 teaches us, that on that day we will see him as he is. During my out-of-body experience, I was not allowed to look at him, but I was in his presence. I am Jesus, the Almighty God. I had such joy, brothers and sisters. And my prayer for all of you and those who don't know Jesus is that you may know that Jesus, Yehoshua, is God. I pray that you do. Come to know this fully, that ye be not deceived, because you cannot worship someone whom you do not know. Alleluia. And so, brothers and sisters, immediately after I received that information that he spoke to me, I found myself on my knees, irrespective of my will, on my knees. Now, we have just read how in Revelation chapter 1, verse 17, John fell at his feet as dead. And also in Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 to 11, we learn that at the name of Jesus, every knee bows 
and every tongue confesses that he is Lord. Brothers and sisters, when you are in his presence, even more so the case than when you would simply hear the name, when you are in his presence, you are made to bow before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Let us go now to John chapter 18, verse 3. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. Now see the he is in italics in the KGV, which means it is not a word that was there originally. They added it for what they believe to be context. But if you read it literally, it says, Jesus saith unto them, I am. Remember how I am introduced himself to Moses. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Now see, interestingly enough, in Job chapter 33 verse 14, it is written, For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. Jesus told them, I am, when they declared that they were looking for Jesus. He told them the first time, I am, and you saw what happened? They fell to the ground. What sword hid them? What stick hid them? What hand or fist struck them? Simply by making a declaration of his identity, they had to fall backward and fall to the ground. Not by their own will, but they had to. Now, because God speaketh twice, Jesus will give them opportunity to hear it yet the second time. So he allows them to get back up, and we read, then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? You think Jesus had not understood their response the first time? Do you think he hadn't heard properly? He deliberately asks them the second time, because they don't know they're talking to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords here. And he establishes his standing as the Almighty having come in the flesh. Then asked he them again, you haven't understood the first time? I'm telling you again. Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. And so you see, brothers and sisters, John fell at his feet as dead. These soldiers who came to him and received the declaration of his identity, I am, fell to the ground. Philippians chapter 2 verses 9 to 11 tell us, at his name, even more so the case in his presence, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. And so now we get back to my testimony. I felt that he was behind me at my right and he hinted to me that he was God. And when I wanted to turn around to look at him, rejoicing that after having sought the Lord for quite some time, I would finally be in the Spirit in his presence. I formed the thought to turn around and look at him, for he was behind me at my right, and I had not finished forming the thought that already he sent me an answer, you cannot look at me. But he confirmed his identity, however, and told me, I am Jesus, the Almighty God. And as soon as he said this, I found myself on my knees, irrespective of my will. And once I was on my knees, with outstretched arms, I raised them up and then bowed down and brought them to what would be the ground, although there was no ground.
brought my arms up again and came back down bowing, brought them up again and brought them down bowing. And I did that 10 to 15 times. And while I did that, though I had to do it and was made to do it, I felt an immense joy and peace. Oh, I was happy. I even was giggling in my spirit, although no sound could be heard. But I knew I was giggling on the inside. And I felt inside, I have come home. I have rekindled with someone whom I have been separated from for so long. I found him. I've come home. And so there was peace and joy. And so this is the first part. Now we get to the second part of my out-of-body experience. It continues from that point as follows. After I'm done worshipping the Lord, having bowed before Him, the scenery changes in a split second. And now, for just one second, I find myself in the midst of the sky, in the night sky. It's dark blue, it's almost black, and I see the stars, and their light shining in the night, in the darkness. And that lasts for just one second, and then the scenery changes again. And now, I find myself in a desertic land. Now, that desertic land seems to be immense, if not infinite. For miles and miles on, I see that this land extends over the horizon. And the first thing that I notice when I come to see that I'm in this environment is that there is an outstanding heat and I am laboring to breathe. And so that's the first thing that shocks me because when I was engulfed in the white light, I was feeling light. I was feeling very well. But the transition to this place, now there's a weight upon me. I can't breathe properly. The air is heavy and, and it's, there's an outstanding heat. I've never felt this type of heat before on the earth. And that's the first thing I noticed. So next thing that happens, two events. First, I noticed that there's a wooden shack in front of me, perhaps two meters in front of me, a wooden shack that is run down. And it doesn't even seem to have a door. It just have a frame that's empty that would be the entrance to this shack, which is very small, where like one person could live there. And next to the shack, there is a picket, a wooden picket, to which a leash is attached and a dog is attached thereto. And the dog, which is brown, a little darker than the sand, is lying on the ground. And when I look at it, I see that it is really, I see that it's really beat down by the heat, such that it's lying down and its head is resting on its front paws. And it's not even motivated to move, it's just lying there. And it's just seemingly enduring the oppressing heat. And it's trying to take a nap just to pass the time. Its eyes are closed. And my arriving on the scene doesn't really trigger any reaction in the dog. And so that's the first event. And the second event is that I notice that my hands now, I can see them in the lower part of my field of vision. I see two hands. And for a second I wonder, wait a minute, I thought I couldn't see myself. How is it now that I can see my two hands? But the strange thing is, they look like furry hands. Black furry hands with long nails and oversized long fingers. And I think to myself, these are not my hands the way they look. But yet, these hands were moving up and down in accordance with the movement of my shoulders, which were going up and down as I strained to breathe. And therefore, a connection was made in my mind that these hands were moving according to the way my body was moving, which brought me to ask myself, why would my hands look this way? These are not my hands. And the Lord read into my mind that I questioned myself concerning this, and He answered me right away. And He told me this, This is the demon that dwells inside you and controls you. It has you under bondage. And the reason why his hands are yours is because he has taken over your vessel, such that you are his. And therefore, 
it can manifest through you. So he has taken over your body. You are now his puppet. So this is why, in a way, you and him have become one. And therefore I understood what Jesus said. And I realized I was demonically possessed, even without me knowing, unbeknownst to me. And at a later time, the Lord also led me to understand that the image of the dog is the image of uncleanness, of filthiness. And so I should mention that I had an addiction to pornography and masturbation, and it had been of 20 years, that addiction. And so filthiness and uncleanness, that's what I was marred by. That's the filth that was characterizing me spiritually, and the dog was a representation of that. And the dog being tied to the picket, being unresponsive, that was an image of me, spiritually, under bondage to that demon who dwelt in that shack, in that wooden shack. And I was asleep, because he had taken over my vessel and cast me aside, and while I slept, he used my body to work. You see, that's the image also that you can draw there spiritually. And the Bible also teaches us in Matthew 12, 43, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. This verse comes to mind because we were in a desertic land, and that devil, as I'm now going to explain, was cast out of me. Because the Bible teaches us that when the strong man of the house is there, the devil cannot come in. He has to first bind the strong man, and then he can spoil the house. And so you have to be overcome by that devil, and being overcome of him, of what you are overcome, of the same are you brought in bondage. And so I was brought under bondage as a dog, an unclean, filthy dog, to that devil, and he held me on a leash. And so, brothers and sisters, to get back to the testimony, putting things back in order, I get to this land, extending over the horizon. I notice that I'm having difficulty breathing and that it's very hot. And then I notice that there's a wooden shack with a dog attached on the side. And I notice hands, furry hands of a devil in the bottom part of my field of vision. And when I inquire about that, the Lord explains to me that I'm demonically possessed with that devil of sexual perversion. I had a porn addiction, and I was addicted to masturbation as well. And now the Lord tells me, Would you like to be set free? Wow! Brothers and sisters, we go to the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 5. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years, when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? And so the Lord, brothers and sisters, asked me, very simply, would you like to be set free from that demonic entity? In other words, do you want me to cut the chains? And immediately, brothers and sisters, I answered him, yes, still communicating with him telepathically. We never exchanged words, but thoughts. And as soon as I had declared this in the Spirit, the Lord made me understand, it is done. And immediately after, I was sucked back into my body and ended up in my bed in the darkness and my eyes opened. And I realized I was in my bedroom and that everything was dark. And... I noticed that my left arm was burning and tingling. There was the sensation of a burning wave running down my arm. And it was pulsating. And back in the day I was in ignorance and I had a crucifix that I was holding on in my hand. I even slept with it at the time, being ignorant. Now I've gotten rid of it. I understand that we are not to be in idolatry and worship these objects instead of worshiping the Lord. But the Lord knew my heart, so he looked over that, and then told me to just get rid of it. And it was not a warmth that hurt, 
It was a comforting heat, and that lasted for perhaps 15 seconds, and then it subsided. So you see, the whole experience was quite brief. So brothers and sisters, on that day, the Lord Yehoshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, came in my bedroom personally as I was seeking him because he was drawing me to him. Remember now how Paul says in Galatians chapter 1 verses 15 and 16, But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, to reveal his Son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen. See, I'm not saying I'm Paul. I'm saying that there is a time appointed where the Lord comes into one's life to transform their life. And he came to me and baptized me with the Holy Ghost on that night. And there was a time appointed in the Lord's agenda that this was the day that he would come to me to reveal himself to me. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. And so, brothers and sisters, since that day, he changed my heart. And he's given me a heart to go and help the poor, to love my fellow man. And, and also, as confirmation that I had received his spirit, he allowed me to experience the things that are written in the Bible to let me know that I've met him and that everything that is written is true. He's allowed me to have gifts of the Spirit and to have the fruit of the Spirit. And so in terms of gifts, He's allowed me to experience receiving words of knowledge, having words of wisdom to give to certain people. He gives me discernment of spirits. He's given me prophetic dreams. He's allowed me to experience speaking in tongues when I worship Him. He has, he's led me to pray for the sick. He has allowed me to be used to cast out devils on certain occasions. And I've experienced performing exorcisms. And it's all Him operating through me, the very things that He has written in the book. And in terms of the fruit of the Spirit, I have love for my fellow man. To where before I was very selfish, a narcissist, proud, in vanity of the things of this world the pride of life, the love of the world, that was me. And now, I'm more tender-hearted. I go to the needy, and I love them. And when I speak to them, they notice something in me to where it can bring them to tears and make me also come to tears for them. And I have peace in the torment that we have right now. And it gives me the ability to still love those who do evil unto me. Now, I am not yet perfect, and as Paul says, I am walking unto perfection. And the Lord is still working with me about some character traits. Over time, He is polishing these things, my traits of character. But in terms of sinning willfully, it's over. Since that night, I've been delivered overnight and never looked back on porn and masturbation, and sin in general, actually. And so I've been delivered overnight. And so this is my testimony, brothers and sisters, regarding my encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. That was my encounter at the flaming bush. And I believe that everybody has an encounter at the flaming bush. Whatever shape and form it takes for different people, it happens in a variety of ways. But the important thing is that you have that moment in time when you feel touched, whether you are in the presence of the Lord or not, where you have this interaction in the Lord in some capacity where you feel that you have been touched in your heart and He has changed you and renewed you in your conscience and you have been baptized with the Holy Ghost. Because if we don't have His Spirit then we are none of His. So there you go, brothers and sisters. This is my partial testimony that focuses exclusively on my out-of-body experience and how I met the Lord, Yehoshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ in the Spirit, and how He baptized me with the Holy Ghost. 
May you be blessed, brothers and sisters. In the mighty name of Yahushua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, God having come in the flesh amongst us, Emmanuel, in whom dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Alleluia. Amen.